Well, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome uh, to this special meeting. It is a City of Sioux Falls special council meeting, and it is for the State of the City Address. Today is Wednesday, March 26, and we're certainly pleased to have all of you here today. We will start our uh, special meeting with a roll call of your City Council. Council Members Aguilar? Here. Anderson? Entman, Erpenbach? Jamison? Here. Karski? Here. Rolfing? Here. Staggers? Present. Thank you very much. We start our meetings in Sioux Falls with an invocation, with a prayer. We're very, very blessed to have Reverend and Pastor Julius Badigo here with Falls Community Church. Uh, the Reverend will lead us in prayer, and then after he is done, we'd ask you to remain standing for our Pledge of Allegiance. Pastor Julius, welcome. Thank you. Almighty God, we thank you for this special meeting. May you bring your wisdom in this great city because it's growing every day. May you bless those in the city council and our mayor, give him wisdom and understanding. May you this day prosper because you are God of God. There is no one like you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Again, my thanks uh, to all of you for being here and, and for the citizens of Sioux Falls that are watching right now or, or will watch. Uh, you, you care about your government, and, and that's, a, that's a big, big thing. This is a special meeting. Uh, once a year, the mayor of this city gives what they call a state of the city address, and uh, that's what I uh, plan to do today. I think the theme of uh, today's message is, is a simple one. It will be really hard to find a stronger city than Sioux Falls, South Dakota, right now. Our, our town is, is fiscally sound. We've got solid revenue growth going on right now. We're living within our means, just like families do and businesses do. We've got a healthy piggy bank, or, or our reserve levels are just uh, unbelievably solid. And yes, in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, our future is very, very bright. Let's just go through some of the financial aspects of, of your city. Property tax revenues are at an all-time high. Uh, you see the 2013 numbers at $49 million that came in. Sales tax revenue, again, that annual growth rate, we had projected a growth rate of 5% last year. In actuality, our sales tax revenues grew at a rate of 8% last year. Sales tax revenue is, is an important thing for, for our city. It's one of the number one ways that we pay for the expenses of your government. The first penny is one that we pay special attention to. And again, you can see it's the highest number we've ever uh, achieved in, in our town. The first penny pays for things like, yes, public safety, police and fire protection, street maintenance, clearing that dreaded snow, park maintenance and upkeep, recreational programs, libraries, and yes, things like planning and building services. We also look for uh, how is the public uh, spending their money in terms of uh, do they feel confident enough to spend things on discretionary items like eating out, motel rooms, ticketed entertainment activities, and yes, sales of alcoholic beverages. That, that's important in Sioux Falls. Uh, and as you can see, we had projected again a 5% year-over-year growth rate, and we came in at 5.7%. This tax helps support our convention center, the Orpheum Theater, the arena, and yes, the Washington Pavilion. General revenues, those, those, those dollars that are coming in, uh, you're going to notice that this, again, is the highest number that we've ever had in, in our city. Almost $140 million was uh, received in 2013. I do want to note to the City Council and to the people of Sioux Falls, we had a record-breaking year, but I also want to make sure that you're aware that we did receive the federal emergency management money as well. That's $6.5 million, and that is included in this number. 
Those general fund reserves, that city's piggy bank that I've been talking about for the last four years, it keeps growing. Uh, we started the year at uh, uh, $45.2 million in that piggy bank. Uh, revenues were high. Expenditures were, were within, our, within our means. And we had a net change of $600,000 that we added to that piggy bank. In our town, in the city of Sioux Falls, not only do families live within their means, not only do businesses live within, your, in, within their means, but the city of Sioux Falls government, your government, lives within its means. The goal that the council has set forth is at a 25% level. Well, in Sioux Falls right now, we're at 32.3%. We've added money every year. 2010, 2011, 2012, 2013. Over the last four years, we've added $4.7 million to that piggy bank. Right now, we've got about $45.8 million in there. Just to give you some perspective on how incredibly strong our city is financially, if there ever came a time, and again, this will never happen, but just let's say that it did for fun. Let's say that we didn't have a single dime come into this city's treasury. This city of Sioux Falls, 162,300 strong, without another dime coming in, could actually sustain itself for four months. Unheard of. Unheard of. You're not going to find that anywhere in, uh, uh, in, in America. Again, your city is unbelievably strong. I have to talk about Operation Timber Strike. This was one of those things that, that hit our city last April, and we knew it was going to be unbelievably expensive by the time that we got through it. I, knew, I do want to give the council an update. The total cost to that unprecedented event was eight, uh, a little over $8.2 million. We had city employees that, that pitched in, uh, and instead of working on, on things that they would normally do, they pitched in to help us with that cleanup effort. That generated almost about $500,000 uh, in terms of their, their net worth to the project. And then, as you know, we did ask for and did receive FEMA money as well as State of South Dakota support in the amount of $6.5 million. The impact to our general fund was about $1.259 million. That was the impact it had on that piggy bank. We had reserves. We were, we were able to, to, to tackle that with, with no issue. But in spite of the ice storm, in spite of that $1.25 million hit to our piggy bank, the city still managed to increase its general fund reserves by $600,000. Debt. It's been in the news a little bit lately, and I'm incredibly excited to talk about it. Our per capita total debt, when you look at uh, cities that we compare ourselves with in, in this area, we're one of the lowest. Our per capita total debt, you can see there's only two cities that uh, are lower than us right now in Rapid and Omaha. This debt that we have, it's, it's very, very manageable. And the exciting thing for this town, for this city, and for all of you taxpayers out there, the debt will be even more manageable in the years to come. This city of yours never borrows money for operating expenses or those short-lived assets doesn't have to. We only use debt in Sioux Falls for those very, very large assets, those quality of life investments, those things that the city, the citizens rally behind and say, yeah, let's invest in those. Infrastructure, fire stations, libraries, and yes, our new event center. Let's look at this debt over the next five years. Well, first of all, in 2013, we actually reduced our debt by more than $14 million. And it's just the beginning. 
This city will reduce its debt every year over the next five years as projected in our, in our capital improvement plan. The five-year CIP plan, that, that capital improvement plan uh, council, it did call for borrowing $57 million for various projects. Even with that plan borrowing, this city is going to continue to actually reduce its debt by more than $79 million over the next five years. Of the $385 million that we have in debt currently outstanding, 55% will be paid off over the next 10 years. I'm going to repeat that. Of the debt that we currently have outstanding, more than half of it will be paid off over the next 10 years. Our debt in this town is unbelievably manage manageable. Our debt burden is very, very good. Our ability to repay this debt, rock, rock solid. We retire debt in this town at a very, very good pace. Don't take my word for it, OK? Moody's, they're a group that this council, that this city relies on to evaluate how are we doing? How are we doing? Uh, Moody's rates our city sales tax bonds as double A2. Look at the graph up above. There's not a long way that we, there's not a, a lot higher that we can go. Now, we'll certainly, we'll, we'll certainly attempt it, but we'll just look at how high we are when it comes to that, that temperature gauge for your city in terms of managing your debt. There's only two possible higher ratings that we could go. There's two above us. And there's 18 below us. I do need to talk about the team that helps really make all this stuff happen. It's not only the city council. It's the 1,100 plus city employees that we have. We have 1,159 city employees right now. Our turnover rate is just unbelievably good. Uh, it's 4.47% turnover rate. And when we do have somebody that leaves us, there is a bevy of people that want to join our team. We had over 4,448 applications for the city of Sioux Falls last year. I'm, I'm just thrilled by that. Uh, they, they know that it's a good place to work. They know that we uh, give back with the days that we're given in such a positive way. And they want to be part of it. We're 700 interviews, 64 openings, and as you know, there are folks that are retiring, taking advantage of our new pension system, and we're planning on being, bringing 100 new people, energetic, hardworking, loyal, trustworthy people who want to make a difference. We're going to bring them onto our team in 2014. One of the things that you have to look at, Council, is just you know, how are we meeting those obligations to those men and those women that have worked so hard for our city uh, over the years? Well, Pew study recognizes Sioux Falls as one of the nation's 16 cities. I said nation. One of the nation's 16 cities that consistently did well in funding its pension obligations. Council, you should be proud. Sioux Falls, you should be proud. These men and women, they work hard for us. They earn these benefits. And we have the ability to pay them well into the future without any worry. And as you know, uh, the one item that I thought was one of the biggest accomplishments for this city was that your city government employees, again, 1,159 strong, 85% of them took advantage to vote in a pension reform uh, ballot. 85%. 80% voted for pension reform. It's a tribute to the men and women that work for city government. Their families were going to be impacted. They were personally going to be impacted. But yet they trusted you, council. They trusted us, government, enough to say, yeah, I think, I think it's the right thing to do. And because of that, taxpayers, you are going to save $300 million over the next 25 to 30 years. Taxpayers are going to save $300 million, $300 million over the next 25 to 30 years. 
As uh, you all know, our, our economy is definitely booming. Two years ago, the city of Sioux Falls created 2,000 new jobs. Last year, we created 3,000 new jobs. And my, my gut says we'll beat that this year with, with no problem. Costco's in town, Northside Walmart, Dick's Sporting Goods, hotel projects all over town, adding 500 new rooms. You, the, the list is just unbelievable for 2013. But 2014 is going to be a lot of fun, too. Whether it be trail, the Trail Ridge Edition, Susan B. Anthony Elementary, the Shields Iceplex, the Plaza, the YMCA renovation that's going on right now on Minnesota Avenue, you know that there's more happening. I need to let all of South Dakota know, and I need to let all of, all of America know, there's a lot of good jobs available in Sioux Falls right now. Uh, we've reduced our city's employment rate, uh, unemployment rate in this city uh, by, by a major, major way. 2011, we were 5.4%, and we dropped it down a year later to 4.7%, a year later to 4.4%, and now in January, it's one of our lowest levels that we've ever had in January, 3.7%. Please, if somebody is looking for a great place to live with good job opportunities, with good, good benefits, good wages, good place to work, have them choose Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Again, we've been called a variety of good things, but right now there's one national publication that's called us America's Next Boomtown. We talked about that $582 million in construction activity, and we broke our city's construction record in, in October. Right now, just to kind of give you some perspective, Council and, and, and people of Sioux Falls, right now in March, we've exceeded $100 million in, constru in construction valuation for the second year in a row. Okay? I'm not going to uh, I'm not going to tell the tell all of you that we're going to break our city's construction record this year. But I feel very strong that we'll at least be number 2. Downtown. We have to talk about that. We've been talking about how our downtown is just becoming so vibrant. Um, places to live, places to work, places to play. So many good things have happened downtown and there's so many people to thank for it. Well, downtown is one hot spot. 20 new businesses and four expansions in 2013 alone. You know what they were. Some of the biggies, the, the downtown Hilton Garden Inn, phase two of that River Greenway, and, and it's a great day today. You can actually go out there and enjoy the sun, take the bridge, and check out that phase two of the River Greenway that you've invested so much of your hard-earned dollars into. The Western Surety Building was sold. That's a big deal. Progress is happening in downtown. DocuTap is moving into downtown and so many others. We've got the first Dakota building expansion, the Phillips Avenue loss uh, uh, that, that broke ground, and places to live sprouted up everywhere. And you still have a hard time finding a place to live. And we do have to talk about our quality of life. Whether I was the mayor, whether these folks were your counselors, there are mayors before me, counselors before these women and men, and all of the taxpayers. Quality of life is just something that we're just thrilled by in, in our city. We look at these things as investments more than we ever do expenses. We want to leave things better for our children and our grandchildren than we ever want to do for us. That's what we do in our town. And we're going to keep doing it, such as we've got a new event center that's opening up in September on time, within budget. And again, 85% of those jobs are local women and local men that are building it. Something that I think is just so important to remember is that uh, this is truly a, a public and private partnership. And I think it's one that you should all be proud of. And, and let me tell you why is that every dollar that we get in private funds is one less dollar that comes from the public domain, the taxpayer. 
Right now, we've had over $35 million in private revenue agreements that have already been inked. And we're not done. And I've said this before, and I'll say it again, and I'm on camera now, and I'm in front of you, and I'm in front of the city council, and I'm going to say it one more time. Counselors, our new event center will operate in the black. But we've done more than just our new event center. Some of those things that we just get really thrilled about in our town. Things like our new Prairie West Branch Library. The West Side waited a long time. And we made it happen. That River Greenway Phase 1, we knew that that was a fun thing. But we also knew that we wanted to do more. We completed Phase 2 of the River Greenway. And, and now we're talking with citizens and downtown business owners and, and others, uh, in, including some right here uh, amongst me, on Phase 3. Parks. Four new neighborhood parks completed in 2013. Granite Valley, Prairie Meadows, Galloway Park, and Dolly Park. Just a great celebration. In our city, this council and our citizens we want to try to build a park within a half mile of every home in our town. We think it's worth it. And we'll still think it's worth it next year and the year to come. In 2014, we're going to renovate some existing parks, and uh, they're, they're just going to be wonderful. Lion Park, Elmwood Golf Course, enhancements to Family Park and Falls Park and Keene Park uh, as well. We also care about those things that maybe are not as exciting, but no less important. Things like roads, infrastructure, sanitary sewer lines. Well, we improved a number of roads last year, such as 6th Street, the 57th Street and Western Avenue intersection, Russell Street, Highway 100. We invested millions of dollars into repairing, rebuilding, and strengthening our roads. And get ready, Sioux Falls, more orange barrels are coming soon. We don't look just about what's above the ground, but we actually really, really care about what's below the ground as well. That South, that South River, uh, South, that Sioux River South uh, Interceptor was a big, big project that people were very, very patient uh, about. But again, it, it prepares us for that heavy rain, for this growing city and, and so much more. There's other things about quality of life, such as affordable housing. In our city, this city council has approved spending on affordable housing projects like we've never done uh, in the past. In fact, we've tripled the level of local funding for affordable housing since 2010. What does it do? It'll, it helps us with new construction, rehabilitation, rental assistance, case management, first-time home buyers assistant, and things like furnace replacement uh, as well. We've, we're doing well, Sioux Falls. We are. But I think the thing that I'm probably most enthused about is that not only are we doing well right now, I think our future is even better. We're confident. And it's all about confidence. It is. Whether it's a football game, whether it's a, uh, some special project that you're on, working on, or, or whether it's running your government and you want to try to accomplish things, it's all about confidence. And right now, the city of Sioux Falls is, is, is at an all-time high. So confident. What are we going to do? Well, we've got to keep Sioux Falls moving. Uh, we've been working with folks like Heath Hofteiser, the public works team. We've been working on trying to keep our town moving, whether it be making our intersections stronger, our roads stronger, and yes, investing in things like traffic light technology. Right now, 26th Street has just made great strides, but now we got to go to 41st Street and Minnesota and so much more, and we'll continue to do that. We have to stay one step ahead of growth. The number one factor in our city's quality of life, number one, is whether you feel safe in your town. Well, over the last four years, we've hired 15 police officers to your team. Two new officers in 13, and we're going to have four new officers in 14. Uh, we we want to stay one step ahead. But we're also doing things like investing in other 
uh, public safety things like your new fire station, uh, fire station number 11, which will be um, uh, opening ground or breaking ground soon. But we also care about things like code enforcement. We do. We know that one bad neighbor can kind of mess it up for the 99 good ones in the neighborhood. We are going to hold them accountable. And the people of Sioux Falls are cheering us on. Public transportation. Council, um, uh, at the last budget address, I, I did chat with you about the importance of we're going to have to address this public transportation challenge that we have. And I said something to you that probably made some of us uncomfortable. But I did say, this is one that's not going to be taken care of without some sacrifice, without some pain, without some, some real tough decisions to, to be made. And in fact, we actually may make some people unhappy as we, as we tackle this. It's time. We need to do it. And I know that with your leadership that we will. We need to do things like expand fixed routes. Because again, remember, three to 4,000 people moving into our town every year. Our town is also expanding in terms of our land mass. Not everybody's got a truck. Not everybody's got a car. And folks do more and more want to use things like public transportation. We finished Russell Street this year. Uh, we will. Uh, it'll be right by our new event center. It'll open time for that opening. Uh, others will be 10th Street and Sycamore Avenue, that, that major intersection. Uh, West 41st Street, you folks have waited long enough. Uh, we're going to get out to T. Ellis Road, and, and uh, that'll be an exciting project. West 12th Street will be repaired. 2nd Avenue reconstructed. And again, 8th Street and Cliff Avenue intersection will be reconstructed and, and realigned as, as it should be. I think uh, the most exciting project, uh, Council, that we're going to have the opportunity to get engaged with and, and also the, the people of Sioux Falls will be the rail yard relocation project. You know, we've been talking about it since 2005. It was two feet uh, in the ground, almost dead. But it's back. And it's strong. And we are going to ink that deal. And when we do, we're going to have almost 10 acres of land right in the heart of our downtown, right in the heart of our city that will be ripe for development. Places to live, places to work, places to reflect, places to play. You, the 162,300 people of, that live in this town, you'll have the ability to put your mark on something that is going to last long after we're gone, long after our children are gone. This project will impact this city for generations and generations to come. There's a lot to celebrate Sioux Falls. Um, I, I'm not the only one cheering us on. Uh, there, there's others all across our great state that are cheering on Sioux Falls right now. And there's actually people across the country that are recognizing what you've been able to accomplish. Sioux Falls is number five on the list of regions on the rise. Eight places have hit that recipe for reviving their local economies. Prevention Magazine names Sioux Falls, <laughs> this is a fun one, number nine on its list of happiest, healthiest cities in the United States. Happy's a good thing. Healthy's a good thing. We must be figuring it out because we're number nine in the country. Oh, and just last night, just last night, we heard the news. Just last night, Sioux Falls listed number five safest place to walk at night. And did you watch the news last night? People were celebrating this in such a grand way. They know that Sioux Falls is safe. That's why people retire here. That's why people live here. That's why we raise our families here, because we are such a safe city. Believe me, uh, maybe. But believe Chief Sedaris. Believe Chief Barthel. Believe these city leaders. Believe this. Number five in America, not number five in Minnehaha County, not number five in South Dakota, 
Number five in America. Not everything is going well in our town. Not everything is perfect. We still have challenges. We still have opportunities. We still have issues. But it's really hard to find something negative to say about our city right now. It's really hard. Stay positive, Sioux Falls, because you got a lot to cheer about. I'm proud of you. 1,159 city employees working their tails off for all of the, the people of this city. 162,300 citizens that are working in collaboration, neighbor helping neighbor. Community leaders, nonprofits, businesses, they are collaborating in a way to make good things happen. And oh, speaking of collaboration, Minnehaha County, Lincoln County, the state of South Dakota, Governor Dugard and his team collaborating with Sioux Falls City Government, collaborating with this city council to make our city better. So many people to thank. We're not going to be able to do it all today. But Sioux Falls, let's keep it going. Your city's strong, and the state of your city is rock solid. Thank you.